Hey everyone, welcome back to John's Watch. Today I'm taking a look at a brand new game that just launched in Early Access on Steam called No Rest for the Wicked. This game went into Early Access on Steam on April 18th, 2024, which is actually the day I'm recording my video, right after it came out. It's developed by Moon Studios GmbH, who are the team responsible for the Ori games, and it's published by Private Division. And its regular price is $51.99 Canadian or regional equivalent. The Steam page describes it as a visceral precision action RPG set to reinvent the genre. I think that's pretty accurate, honestly. Um, it's it's really very much it's a Souls-like. Uh, if we're talking combat action RPG, uh, the combat and and movement to an extent is definitely Souls-like. There's dodging. There's parrying. There's uh, boss fights with health bars at the bottom of the screen, everything like that. Um, pretty much every combat encounter can kill you, so it definitely is a Souls-like. And then it's also mixed with probably something like Diablo is probably the best comparison. Um, the camera is isometric, you can't change the camera position uh, yourself, Only you can only change it by moving your character through the world. So you're, you're looking down, I mean you're seeing it in the video, uh, but the, the camera angle is very much like uh, something like Diablo, Path of Exile, something like that. So at the time of recording, I've played for just over two hours, and I'm not going to play anymore. I'm going to leave it there and hold off on, on playing it again until it fully releases, until it's done with early access. There's no estimate for when this game will be out of early access. Typically, when a game on Steam has the early access banner, there's a bunch of questions they have to answer, like why early access? Uh, how is the full version planned to differ? Um, will the game be priced differently? It will in this case. Uh, and the, the the main question I usually look for is approximately how long will this game be in early access? And they just gave a very vague non-answer. Basically, it'll be out of early access when it's done being in early access, essentially. So no idea when it's going to be done, but I'm okay to hold off on, on playing it. Uh, until it's fully done, mostly because I think this is an extremely promising game. Uh, I like what they say about they're looking to reinvent the genre. I mean, I don't think it reinvents the genre because it, it's a Souls-like. Everything has been a Souls-like at this point. Uh, but I think it is really, really promising. It just needs a ton of work right now. And I do want to reiterate that I played my two hours and I'm recording this video on release day when it came out in early access. So this is is pretty much the roughest it's going to be, but this is the launch build. This is, they decided this was uh, the version they wanted to start selling to people, even though it is in early access. So I, I think it, it's absolutely still open to criticism and I'm going to get into that in this video. So when you start off, you get to make your character it's a very basic, simple character creator, which I thought was kind of weird at the start. But as you get into the game and you see the camera angle they've chosen, uh, and you realize how far away your camera is from your character, um, it doesn't really matter because you'll practically never see your character unless you go into uh, uh, your, your inventory and you're looking at your, your character over on the right. Um, doesn't doesn't really matter. You know, it's kind of hard to feel too attached to this character when your your camera is so far away from them for most of the time. You get a very strong opening cinematic. Um, all the characters, even in the early access version, are all voiced, which is really impressive. Varying quality of, of voice acting, but they're all all decent enough that nothing's really bad. Um, some of the characters, or some of the, some of the voices, sound like a little. Like they were recorded in, in different uh, recording setups, just like the, the acoustics were different. Um, this is just kind of nitpicking. The, the voice acting is, is solid, honestly. It's totally fine. The character you play as is being transported on a ship and you make your way around the ship. You kind of learn a little bit of exploring and stuff. You go to bed, you wake up, the ship's being attacked because of course it is. It's a, uh, you know, a... a a Diablo-like. Uh, don't all those games start with, uh, you know, a ship being attacked and you waking up on a, a shore somewhere? I'm sure they all do. <laughs> so the ship's atta attacked, it sinks, everybody dies except for you, you wash up on the shore, and then you really start exploring. The opening area is surprisingly big. Uh, maybe it shouldn't be surprising because 
Moon Studios obviously have done the two Ori games. Those are Metroidvanias. Uh, Metroidvanias kind of rely on having a good map with a lot of exploring, a lot of branching paths and revisiting. So maybe it shouldn't be surprising that even the opening area has kind of branching paths. And there's a lot to explore, a lot to do. You will run around, you'll fight enemies, you'll find various crafting materials from, um, you know, tools that you use to actually gather materials, to food ingredients that you use to cook dishes that you use to heal yourself. There's no uh, Estus flask that replenishes whenever you die. Um, the way you heal is by gathering mushrooms and crabs and herbs and stuff like that, cooking them at a fire, um, kind of kind of Zelda style, I guess. And then those are your healing items. You can find lots of different weapons in the starting area, lots of different armor. Um, there's a good variety of, of items you're finding, which is great. You get kind of a, a good chance to try out different weapon styles. I tried out pretty much everything I found, except for like daggers, because I I don't know, I'm just not much of a, a dagger player, I guess. So I, I didn't try those, but I tried uh, a, a long sword, I guess it is. Uh, I, I tried out a staff I found. Uh, didn't really want to get too into the magic yet. Uh, tried out uh, like a pickaxe, I guess, which was pretty good. And then eventually I found a, a big old claymore and I decided just to stick with that because it just seemed kind of fun. <laughs> Once you've explored and progressed enough, uh, eventually you come across an NPC who you can save from being attacked. This NPC is kind of your, like your, your starter vendor, I guess. He buys stuff from you, he sells some stuff to you, and he also repairs your equipment. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get into the repairing equipment part just yet. I'm gonna save that for a bit later when we're talking about the mechanics. This, this part's just kinda uh, like an overview of what you see and encounter in the first couple of hours. So you get the starting vendor, he eventually moves to uh, your your first bonfire, I guess. It's kind of a bonfire, like once you find your first one, whenever you die, you'll respawn at it. But um, from the start, at least, enemies don't respawn when you rest at a bonfire. Uh, you don't recover health when you rest at a bonfire, which is kind of weird. You can do a bunch more exploring, even from this first bonfire, you can find a second bonfire can't warp between them uh, at that point and eventually you'll find your way to the first boss. I think it's a pretty decent first boss. Uh, seemed quite difficult at first but um, eventually I got a feel for it. Uh, I was fighting with my big old claymore at this point and I, I saw somebody commented, I think it was in the Steam forums, uh, that the first boss was kind of to teach you the importance of parrying. In this game and I'd, I'd played around with parrying a bit but when I had my big claymore it's a two-handed sword so I couldn't actually parry um, and this boss didn't teach me anything about parrying but instead it taught me uh, about really timing your attacks and especially with a claymore with such a, a long kind of wind up and follow through um, it, it, it really taught me the value of looking for the right opening to attack with the right weapon, I guess. Um, I think it's quite a fair first boss. I think I killed him on my sixth attempt or something like that. Um, and it, it, it felt decently good. After you beat the first boss, you get to go to, I'm assuming this is like the main hub area. It's called Sacrament. It's a surprisingly massive town. Definitely gives me kind of Diablo, uh, uh, Path of Exile hub area vibes. Uh, it's huge. You find a new bonfire there. Um, it unlocks the fast travel ability, but it's not true fast travel, unfortunately. It's, you know, kind of light fast travel, basically. It, from the Sacrament bonfire, it'll let you fast travel to the bonfire you last rested at. And then if you go back to that bonfire, you can then warp back to Sacrament. So you can only ever warp between two bonfires at a time, which I don't like at all. I would much rather it was just like full fast traveling. Possibly that unlocks later in the game, but uh, like I said, I'm not playing any further now. You meet a guy up in, in the rookery. You go to sleep in your, your new quarters. When you wake up, you find out these are actually your quarters. There's a chest there where you can store items. Uh, and 
I guess anybody who plays on the same realm as you can access that chest. Um, I think that's that's part of like the co-op thing. I, I believe it does have co-op um, implemented. So I think that that means you know anybody you invite to play on your realm, they call it, can access that chest and and get your items if they want. You then wander around the city a bit. Um, it's it it cannot be overstated how massive this city is. It was very confusing to walk around. Um, you get a whole bunch more quests, and then I stopped playing because I you know I I think by about an hour in I knew I was not going to play too long, but I wanted to give it I wanted to at least get past the first boss before I did my video. So I have a lot of issues with the game right now. Uh, do want to re-emphasize that I think it is super promising. I think when this is out of early access, I think this is probably going to be something pretty special. Um, but right now, it, it does have a lot of issues. I guess let's start with the main one for me, I think, is performance. Performance is absolutely abysmal. It's kind of weirdly bad. Um, I have a 3080 and an i9-9900 and a 1440p monitor, so I'm playing it at 1440p, and my performance would be anywhere between, I think sometimes it would hit about 80 FPS, uh, but the lowest I managed to get it to hit was 19 FPS, and it probably averages about 40 FPS, I'd say, just, just on average from the, the whole two hours. There's no proper graphics settings to speak of. There's at least a motion blur toggle, which is fantastic. Um, I probably would not have played two hours if there wasn't. But there's just these these weird graphics presets. Uh, it's like, you know, ultra quality, quality, balanced performance. It, it's kind of the DLSS uh, settings, but the game doesn't have DLSS yet. It says coming soon. Um, so maybe that'll be helpful. Uh, eventually. But yeah, you can't change uh, shadows, for instance, or reflections, or something like that. Uh, you've only got these presets that don't really do a ton. So there's not really any graphic settings to change. I even tried dropping it down from 1440p to 1080p to see if that would make any difference. Um, and of course, I, I did that on the attempt, the, the boss attempt where I actually killed him, so that footage is going to be slightly blurrier than it should have been. Um, it did not change the performance in the slightest, like not even a, a 1 FPS boost. So there's definitely something going on with the game, uh, because yeah, changing graphic settings doesn't make the slightest uh, difference to performance at all. Even the cutscenes were all over the place, it, it, it's just really weird. Um, the, the cutscenes must all be, uh, like, they are all in-engine. Which is just kind of a strange decision, considering how poor the performance is, because, you know, like, you're sitting there, you, you've got your controller down, and you're just watching these cutscenes run at, like, 20 to 40 FPS, and it's, it's just, it just sucks. I guess as we're, as we're getting into my criticisms, I should uh, mention that they actually posted a, a known issues uh, announcement on the Steam forums, and they said, like, here are the known issues we're looking to address. Top of it is performance. They also posted some really weird, like, suggestions, I guess, on how to fix performance. Um, they had uh, three three ideas, sort of. The, the first idea is you may encounter hitches as you load into new areas. Um, no, you, you just encounter hitches uh, in the same areas constantly. You know, there's no shader compilation. Um, there's just problematic areas for the game where, you're, where you'll get hitches every time. They also said you can set quality presets as well as other options in the settings menu to help improve frame rate. We've already discussed the, the graphics presets are kind of useless and don't actually improve frame rate at all. And their last suggestion was installing No Rest for the Wicked on an SSD is highly recommended. I of course have the game on an SSD, doesn't help my performance at all. Uh, I would imagine most people probably have an SSD and performance is an issue for most people. So that's that's my talk about performance. Um, it's, it's really, really bad. Um, just not enjoyable to play in the slightest. I think if performance had been good and I'd had all the other issues I have with the game, I might have kept playing, but it just does not feel good to play at all. And it's, it, you know, I didn't want to really ruin my, my feelings about this game because I think it's going to be good at some point. There's no way to rebind controls. I played with a controller because I 
saw on the Steam page that it said, like, the developers suggest you play with a controller. I was like, great, that sounds good. Um, I think controller is the way to go, but there's no way to rebind controls, and a lot of the controls are quite questionable. You've got roll, climb, and jump all on the same button, and that button is not B, that button is A. Uh, actually, B isn't used for anything apart from backing out of menus. Uh, so, you know me, I like having my souls like dodges on B. Can't do that in this game, really annoyingly. Attack is on X, which, you know, if it can't be on right bumper, I want it on X. Parry is on left bumper, like it should be. Uh, but you can't rebind controls. They also consider key rebinding an issue they're looking to address, so that's good. Uh, I don't know if, you know, that's they're going to change it enough to let you have dodge on B like it should be. I guess we'll see. The other huge issue I have with the game is the durability system. Um, I hate durability in games in something like Dark Souls 2 and 3. It's not a problem. Uh, basically in those games, every time you attack with your weapon, it loses a tiny bit of durability. But if you die or rest at a bonfire, it just fills up. No problem. In this game, attacking doesn't use durability, but dying makes you lose durability on everything, on your weapons, on your clothing, on your armor, whatever. When you die, you don't drop your currency or anything. Uh, basically, as you kill enemies, your XP bar goes up, and when you die, you don't lose any of your experience, you don't drop money, you don't drop items or anything, you just lose durability on your gear. And before you kill the first boss, you can go to the vendor I mentioned earlier, the, the first vendor you find, and he will repair all your gear for free. But after you've beaten the first boss, you then have to start paying to repair your gear. And I saw on the Steam forums that apparently money isn't really hard to come by in the game, so it's not, you know, you're never actually fully gonna run out of durability. Um, Somebody said, once I saw how easy it was to make to actually make money in this game and saw we're not exactly going to run out of materials, it didn't really bother me. Repairing is easy. Whenever you hit a bonfire, you can just teleport back to Sacrament to repair and then teleport back and continue your adventure. And then the next person on the forum replied to this and said, so the feature does nothing but waste time is what I'm getting from what you said. And it's completely true. It is not a fun mechanic. It's literally just there to waste your time. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking. I genuinely do think that the durability mechanic will not be in the game by the time it comes out of early access. It's it's very, very unpopular, and it literally adds absolutely nothing to the game. This part of the video is just kind of going to be my, my general notes. Uh, I don't have uh, anything as, as big to go into as you know the performance or the durability or anything. Um, in fact, a user Pops, Pops Q, Pop SQ on uh, Steam posted a, a review. Um, it's a positive review, but they also have a bunch of the same critiques I do, so I'm just going to like use their review as, as kind of uh, uh, notes for the end of this video. One thing they say is environment readability needs to be improved. Sometimes you can't see things like flowers or mushrooms because they blend with the background colors. Uh, normally, uh, materials you can gather kind of do like a little gentle sparkle. Sometimes it's really hard to see that sparkle um, on the run from the first bonfire to the first boss. Um, you know, I'd, I'd gone up and down, or I'd gone up that path several times on the way to the boss. And I think on like the the second last attempt at the boss, I, I found a, a crab item, like a, a horseshoe crab I could pick up, a material, that I hadn't seen on any of the previous attempts because it just wasn't obvious that it was there at all. Uh, so, I don't know, some, something about the, maybe just make more of a glow on the items would uh, make it better would make it more readable to see. The movement. The movement is super sluggish. Your character's default movement speed, if you're not holding the sprint button, is just painfully slow. Uh, it feels like the very first Lords of the Fallen, which was just so, so sluggish. Uh, it feels terrible. You're pretty much always holding down the A button to sprint because the default movement feels so bad. Just double the default movement speed, honestly. Um, you know, after we've had games like Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3, Elden Ring, where all character movement speed feels good and speedy, uh, it just sucks to go back to this and, and feel how sluggish it is. The game does feel 
quite difficult sometimes. Um, enemies just kind of, they, they tend not to get staggered, I guess. So like if I'm attacking them with my Claymore, if I hit them with like my big two attack combo, um, as soon as like I finish the combo, you'd think they'd be sent flying or something, but they'll literally just like attack me and then I'll go flying. Um, just yeah, they, they feel like they can really tank more hits than you'd expect. Doesn't feel good. It also feels really bad when there are multiple enemies attacking you because it, it very much, the combat kind of feels geared to be more one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're dealing with even two enemies, it gets so, so difficult, honestly. And I, I, I took a lot of deaths to just having to fight multiple enemies. This has been a pretty long video. Um, these these post-review or post-commentary reviews are getting a lot longer. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there. But... Overall, like I said right at the start, I think this game is super promising. I think there's something actually really special here, but it needs a ton of work. Um, I, I guess I, I didn't even mention, like, in, in one of the later cutscenes, every time the camera angle changed, even if it was to a camera angle you'd already seen, every texture would pop back in, and it was so distracting and looked so bad, and the performance was still crap in this cutscene. It was still at like 35 FPS. It was just just shocking. Um, so, super promising. Something special here. Needs a ton of work. The performance needs to be worked out. There needs to be a ton more settings available. The durability system needs to be removed. Rebindable keys need to be added. Movement speed needs to be increased. There's, there's a lot that needs working on here. Um, it is in early access, which is kind of the point of it. They're kind of putting out this version of the game as it is right now, and they're looking for feedback. Uh, I do think maybe they should have held on to it for a week or two. Um, like I said, it came out on April 18th. They actually only announced the release date on April 15th. So April 15th, I mean, they knew this was the version of the game they were going to be putting in early access. I don't know why they announced the release date for three days later. I think they should have announced it for maybe two weeks later and, and worked on some of the performance issues because they must have seen these performance issues. It's not not good enough. So yeah, absolutely one to keep an eye on for however long it's in early access. Again, they didn't actually say how long it's going to be in there for, but uh, I, I'm i very, very intrigued to look at it once it's done early access, but I will not be touching it until uh, it is finished and in full release. That was a look at the early access version of No Rest for the Wicked. Thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!